Um, it's now uh, 15.45. I think uh, we should start our session. Um, welcome. This is uh, the core conversation about uh, Composer and Drupal 8. And my name is Florian Weber. I am a core contributor and maintain the uh, Drupal packages and the Drupal um, Composer template on GitHub, and I work at Überbit. My name is Tobias Stöckler. I am also a core contributor and uh, work a little bit on the Composer stuff, and otherwise I maintain the shortcut module and the config translation module for Drupal 8. And I work for Erdfish. Okay. So the first thing we really wanted to point out that even though us two are standing here, the whole getting Composer to work with Drupal is not just uh, not just a work of us two, but really like a team effort of a whole bunch of other people. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what we wanted to point out. Even though we're standing here, we're sort of representative for uh, everyone else that's been uh, really putting in a lot of effort so far. Some of them are here, and uh, yeah. So um, it's our agenda today. So we want to uh, discuss a few things. Uh, first, um, how we currently use Drupal Core, uh, a composer in Drupal Core. Um, how we want to make it, uh, how we want to support um, contrib modules with the composer dependencies, um, how we could enable third party dependencies, and also how we could expose um, contributed modules on Drupal.org to packages or our own implementation of packages. So um, we don't, that's a core conversation, that's why we don't discuss what's is Composer or what we, what's the current state of Composer in Drupal Core? Um, there are two great blog posts about how we currently use Composer. One is from uh, Boyans and the other one is uh, from, from Tim. I, um, you should read it if you have any question in detail. And there are, it's a great introduction into the topic. Um, currently, that's, that's our goals. So we want that Composer supports core development so that we easily could add new dependencies and it's not uh, a hassle that we have a huge vendor directory in our composer, in our Drupal project. Uh, we want to support third party modules, contrib modules with composer dependencies. And an example here is the address module or MS and SDK or also the Drupal upgrader module. These are all contrib modules which contain composer dependencies. and. It's currently a hacky way how to get them into or play nice with the rest of the core dependencies. And also we want to have um, support the composer create project command. That's just a standard way how to instantiate a new composer project and that you can all manage all dependencies with this project. And of course, we are Drupal and that's why it's not that easy for us because we have many different uh, groups of people, so we have to, to support different needs and that's the main, I think that's the root cause why it's currently so difficult to do Composer right in Drupal project and client projects and every, every stuff. So we have to support core development, um, so that means test bot, packaging, um, we have to support the site builder use case, that's a person um, who's not familiar with Composer and it's a hard requirement for us that we don't need Composer to work with Drupal. So it means you can download Drupal and start working, and you may need Composer if you want to use a contrib module which needs supposer, a Composer. And of course we want uh, to um, support the new kind of workflow where we can manage every single dependency in our project with Composer. And that's basically how other PHP projects um, currently work. Um, now we are recorded the video um, of what's the current state of Composer in Core, and maybe Tobias want to talk about it. Yeah. So this is this is basically just a uh, clean checkout of um, Drupal 8.x, which I'm proving right here, um, and I'm just doing a Composer install. Um, so this is yeah. So this is what you get um, if you just do it with Drupal and. So this is something that we really want to support because even though 
uh, it may or may not be explicitly documented to do this, this is what people will do because they download Drupal, they see a composer.json, um, so they run composer install because they think it'll work because that's how everything else works or every other project that uses composer. Um, but as you now see, it's actually really weird what happens because now, um, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So now what's actually happened is we have a huge um, diff in our project because Composer has now downloaded the beta version of the core directory because that's the latest release of, um, of Drupal. So, oh, can we just stop that maybe? Yeah, so let me just talk about that for a second. Um, so because we've cloned um, Drupal core with Git, we have the latest code in the repository, but since we've installed Composer or we've done a Composer install, um, Composer fetches the core, the Drupal.core, a Drupal slash core package, and the latest version is the um, beta 15, so we actually download the beta 15 into our latest repo, which is really weird and messed up. Um, and so we have this diff, so that's one of the problems we want to avoid. The second problem is, you see, I did the ls command, and you see um, that Composer actually downloaded the um, download all the, the third-party dependencies in a vendor directory. Um, so it's not a core vendor, but in vendor, which is, stand, like, which is standard and how other PHP projects do it. But now we have them in core vendor and in vendor, so um, that's also really messed up. Um, and then the third thing I'm going to do is, so since we now have them in both places, you could think I can just remove them from core vendor and be fine. Um, but that's actually also not the case. So if you do that, um, like just remove all the core vendor stuff, we still have it in the top level vendor. And then for instance, try uh, address site install. What's gonna happen is because we have the autoload PHP, um, that still references the core vendor file. Um, and since it's not like no longer gone, uh, no longer there, um, it's, yeah, it's just not gonna work. So you see that there's a lot of things that just don't work and are just, messed up with the current process. Um, yeah, and so we want to propose a way to fix a lot of those things. Yeah. Also, yeah. So let's presentation mode more. Just start again. <coughs> Sorry. It takes a while. Doesn't work. Yeah. So we saw so that's that's the slide. So that our current problems, the core directory is uh, in the repository. It's committed, um, and if you download and composer um, replaces Drupal core, we can't manage external dependencies in our com root composer JSON. The auto load PHP needs to be updated, and also uh, the git ignore needs file needs to be updated because it's just a huge diff and a mess. So we try to do just a simple replace Drupal core in the root composer JSON. This means um, this repository contains the other composer repository and if the dependency uh, is ful uh, fulfilled, it means that we just would skip download composer J uh, Drupal slash core, but it doesn't work because we also would lose our Symfony and third party dependencies that are inside the Drupal slash core package. Um, there is also a big issue on it. It's um, to solve this um, that the root composer JSON is actually working. It's called make the composer uh, root composer JSON a working example. And the currently workaround uh, for that is that we have a Drupal um, project template uh, on GitHub because GitHub integrates nicely with its packages, and then we get always the up-to-date release on it. And it contains a few other features like. Um, the vendor directory is not in the document root. It has a pre-configured um, composer installers and a few other things. So 
If you currently want to use it, then you should check out this project well, because I think it's the best way to do Composer currently in Drupal Core. But we want to bring this or parts of this to the Drupal Core project that we all can, can benefit from it and that we get a really nice standard solution. <clears throat> so we had a, diff, uh, a few discuss, discussions before in DrupalCon LA and other DrupalCons and we tried a few different solutions. So we tried to approach with multiple vendor directories that we have one vendor directory in the root of our project where we could maintain custom dependencies and that we have a core slash vendor directory where we have all core um, dependencies. But actually, the, it's not going to work because Composer needs a single vendor um, directory with all custom dependencies. So um, a few days ago, actually, um, we found or discovered a new solution. Um, it's related with uh, to the uh, Composer merge plugin. That's a Composer plugin that works similar to Composer Manager, but actually on the Composer level, and it's not an external um, dependent or not a Drupal specific dependency. A Composer Merge plugin allows us to merge multiple Composer JSONs into one single Composer JSON. It me would mean that we have an include statement in the root Composer JSON, and this could actually include the dependencies from core slash composer JSON. And we could also include custom dependencies from contrib modules with this approach. So that's our, that could be our new composer JSON. And it looks like this. So we have Drupal Drupal, or that's the standard. We added the, as a requirement the Wikimedia composer merge plugin. It, ha it has already a stable release, but I did some development. That's why it's currently a um, dev uh, master. Then we replace the Drupal core. Um, that means the Drupal Drupal project contains already Drupal core, so we don't have to re-download it. And here's the magic. That's the extra configuration for the merge plugin. It would mean it merges all requirements and require dev, statement, uh, require dev st statements from core composer JSON on runtime in our root composer JSON, and they are already installed afterwards. And it also uh, can um, wildcards, so it means it would look in the contrib mo um, folder for all dependencies from contrib mod um, for contrib modules and themes, so we could extend it to themes and install profiles and so on, and that would um, is would work for core development because we can't split currently our core directory from Drupal Drupal from the Drupal project because then it's very hard to test and to get um, our, our workflow because, right, because then we, um, we still need to, do, uh, to provide um, tarballs uh, for site builders. And with this approach, the site builder could actually download standard modules and if they don't have a, a composer dependency, uh, it's not required to run composer install, it just works. And if, it, if the module has composer de uh, dependencies, then it just would work with Composer install, but it would be automatically discovered. So, and Drupal Core could be updated without Composer, and that was one big uh, security concern for people who are not familiar with Composer. Yeah, and that's this just uh, addition to uh, support custom dependencies, uh, cust uh, contrib modules to require them via Composer, but it's a, dif uh, it's a different op uh, issue and it's not related to the merge plugin. <clears throat> and there's also a uh, other um, solution, um, but we hadn't hadn't time to explore it in, in depth because we discovered it uh, just a few days ago, and we are currently um, evaluating both. But as, as it currently looks like, we would prefer solution one because it supports the site builder uh, use case, and it works already. And now we have also a video with the Composer Merge plugin. And yeah. Do you want to talk about it? No. Okay. So here I'm now basically uh, the status of the start is the beginning. So I have a clean Drupal 8 um, install with the same commit. And now I'm going to apply um, one of the patches from the issue that we linked earlier. Um, 
So Webflow already basically rolled everything he just showed, the, um, the changes to the Composer JSON into a patch, which we can see now. So he, he updates the uh, autoload PHP, and then we see the changes to the Composer JSON, which is basically exactly what, um, what he just showed in the GIST. Um, yeah, that should be pretty much it. And now I'm going to run Composer install, um, and we're going to see basically that almost all of the weirdness has gone away, and it mostly just works, um, sort of to prove to prove that this is actually working. Um, right, so now I'm going to do a git status. We see that um, Composer now has not at all touched the core directory, so it's left that completely alone. Um, it just has added the vendor directory and the composer.log file, so um, we could add that to the repo for now as well. And you can also see now that you can just um, go ahead and do the Drush site install because we've updated the autoload PHP um, and it now finds the directories properly in the root vendor. Um, so this is really sort of um, a standard workflow for anyone who's used to Composer. He just clones, uh, so assuming this patch would, would go into uh, 8.0.x, um, the, the workflow really could be for people to just clone the repository and run Composer install in the root, and they could just uh, work fine with it like with any other Composer-enabled project. <coughs> Um, core developers, because the core directory is left untouched, core developers are also sort of supported, and you can roll patches and everything. Um, yeah, so this is something um, that we feel sort of combines the best of all worlds. Um, and it, yeah, as you can see, it's it, it mostly just works. So, talk about, I see one more. Yeah, and. Um, Currently, because now we know uh, that uh, RC1 is on the table, uh, we want to get it in before RC1, so we have a few weeks um, to get it in. All the other issues uh, related to Composer uh, are follow-ups, and I think it's not really necessary to get them in afterwards, but it would be even, our Composer implementation would be even cleaner with them, but it will work without them too. So these are the possible follow-ups. Um, because we don't have to support multi or different Composer works workflows anymore, we could remove, again, autoload PHP in our root um, directory because even if you use a Composer-driven workflow, it it's, it's would be in vendor slash autoload. And if you don't use Composer, it's still in vendor slash autoload. So it's not a hard requirement anymore. We could run Composer install and triple CI and during the packaging, and it would mean we could uh, roll um, very small composer-related patches and add dependencies because we could remove our vendor directory in core completely and add it to our git ignore. So that's basically the end goal. It would make Drupal lighter, and everything would still work. Tarballs would work. Drupal CI would work. Composer-driven <laughs> development would work. Yes. Is that uh, yeah, it's 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 just related to core, because everything else is or for distributions because a distribution would have multiple core uh, modules in it, then the merge uh, plugin would also work because they are in there, and then we get all dependencies for these and could dis uh, distribute them in one distribution. Um, yes. Mike. Yeah, sorry, we missed the first question. So for your site product, like your site-specific product, you would not touch the uh, root composer JSON file. You would put it in some kind of, like your own distribution or something like that, or no, your you own can, custom module. You can touch the com root composer JSON because it doesn't contain any composer or Drupal core dependencies because they are still in core slash composer JSON. Because ah, see, we merge yeah. it in on runtime. It cool. contains just your own dependencies, and it's very similar to HTXs or so. I see. Sure, you have, you have to uh, merge it during updates, but it's highly unlikely uh, that we have to touch it during AAA development cycle. Cool, thanks. Yeah. 
Any other questions so far? Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, you say you, you're merging the composer JSON files, yes. but if instead you would, we would create a composer JSON in the root yes. uh, uh, before downloading anything, and then you run composer and it downloads Drupal and other stuff, and then it automatically has the dependencies of its sub packages. So then it wouldn't have to merge the composer JSON, or does it, is that not a good idea? Um, Maybe it's a good idea, we have to explore it, but I think we thought about it already because we want the Composer Merge plugin. It's still a little bit of a hack for people who are not familiar with Composer, but we also want to support the com real Composer-driven development, and that's why we need a subtree split for Drupal slash core, and that's why we should um, put the dependencies into the Drupal slash core directory to support this use case. Um, yes. Yeah, the concern was um, mainly that this Drupal core should be updatable without Composer. Or we can use Composer, uh, Drupal core wi without Composer. Uh, yeah, but if you, if you use this workflow without Composer, then you wouldn't have this uh, root uh, Composer JSON, or would you? We still would have a composer, root Composer JSON. Yes? And also okay. the auto, auto loader uh, doesn't okay. really fit all together. But we can discuss it later. Maybe okay. in depth, though. Yeah. So this, these are our possible follow-ups, and we could get them in any uh, during um, RC phase. Maybe we should have discussed this with the core developers, but it also a little bit depends on Drupal C and our packaging scripts. But it's it's then it's already compatible, and it's, I would not consider it as, as an API change because all files are still in the right place. Yeah, I just wanted to point out Drupal CI already does a composer install, yeah. so that's that part's done. Cool. So, uh, yeah. About a month ago? Yeah, so that's... Well, so the thing, this would sort of change, and uh, we talked to, talked to Neil yesterday about this, um, but that was sort of before or in between we discovered this new thing. So um, what Drupal CI currently does is that it runs a Composer install in the core directory because that's where all the dependencies on like Symfony and everything else is. Um, and what this would allow us, or what this would enable um, is actually to run a Composer install in the root of Drupal itself. Um, yeah, so that's also, because we have that issue for um, running the Composer install on packaging. So that's sort of like, that yeah. Well, the current patch matches Drupal CI in that it runs it in the core directory, but we might want to like discuss the relation to this issue um, because that would change it to running Composer install on the root. So it might make sense to sort of like, yeah, we should sort of discuss uh, whether it makes sense to then support, uh, popo uh, postpone the packaging issue on this. Um, and try to get this in as fast as possible before RC, and then like make packaging directly run Composer install in the root. Um, yeah, that's something we, we should figure out. Yeah, right, right. It's sort of, yeah, it's sort of like a chicken and egg thing. Like we wanna get this in as fast as possible, but um, yeah, yeah, we should, right. Okay, now we solved how we gonna use Drupal with Composer in core and it all works, but there's another big issue and that's related uh, to our packages or that we host all uh, modules on packages. So packages is a Composer repository and it contains all metadata about, it would contain all metadata about um, Composer packages, it means Drupal module, themes, install profile, distribution, trash extensions, everything. And <clears throat> we have, there are two options. One is the first option, we just push everything to packages.org, but it has a few downsides because it would require that every repository we are want to publish there has a composer JSON. That's currently not the case for Contrib because I think we should have Composer JSON in every single module because there's no real benefit if you want to composer driven development and you only can require modules that have composer dependencies. Every module should there should be there. Otherwise there's no real benefit. And 
uh, it would also require that we um, apply semantic versioning to triple country projects and yeah, both are long outstanding issues. So I think it's not feasible that we get it for triple eight. Maybe we can take a new um, try for triple nine, but I think for triple eight it's off the table, or I guess so. And the second option is what we already implemented. Uh, it's a triple specific package, packages. Um, and this could have some more logic. It could accept repositories that doesn't contain a composer JSON because it can translate or generate the composer JSON out of the Drupal info files, and we do it already. And it would also uh, work with our current versioning scheme because we could translate the versions to similar like versioning system. Um, Drupal packages is already up and running, and we had a 170 uh, 30,000 uh, installations last month, so that's a lot, I guess. And we started early uh, 2015, and it's a steep growth uh, since then. Um, there are already issues uh, for the for this. And yeah, that's um, there's an uh, another approach so that we could change our um, versioning scheme to. Uh, not a three-digit versioning number, that we we could use four-digit versioning numbers, and Composer supports it but internally, but never has tried it already because yeah, it's, I don't know why it's in Composer, but yeah, nobody uses it, so it's, I think we will run into issues, and there are already, we discovered already a few issues, like the tilt um, operator and the caret operator doesn't really work because it it runs, it's required to have three digit version numbers for it, and we would have four. It means the meaning of tilt and caret um, operators is completely different, and I think it's very hard to, um, to explain this to all developers that our composer requirements work different than anybody else. Yeah, a workaround for our branches is the branch alias. So we could um, convert our 8.x minus 8.x branch to a uh, somewhere like um, constraint. Yeah, that's basically our core conversation or our intro in the core conversation. And I think um, we discuss the usage in core a lot, but we should discuss the packages uh, implementation as well. So we take questions or <clears throat> so if I'm understanding your proposal correctly for handling core, we'll still have core vendor in the repository and therefore in the tarball. And if we run, you know, if we do run composer install in the, in the Drupal root, we'll end up with the second vendor, which gets used instead of? No, we would, re we, this patch also moves the vendor from core slash vendor to the root again. Okay, so what's in the repository would be core slash composer.json. Yes, without a log file. With, a, with, no log, with, with no log file? Yeah. Okay, and then there'd be a, a top-level vendor directory that is in the repository. Yes. That is the result of that. Yeah. And so the, then if I want to do a proper composer workflow for, uh, for my sites, then... I'm going to have to take that back out of the repository? No, no, you just uh, modify right. the root composer JSON mm -hmm. and remove the merge plugin because if you want to do proper composer development, you would use the subtree split with Drupal slash core. Because. Oh, so then a Drupal, Drupal slash core would end up in vendor? Uh, no, it's, it would end up in slash core because we have the composer installers and the Drupal uh, core project has type Drupal. My, Triple minus core, hyphen core, and it would, a composer would dispatch it automatically into the right directory. Okay. So, so it, it, guys, what, what I'm concerned about, and it, it sounds like this isn't a concern, I just want to verify, if there's multiple copies of large swaths of code, um, I know from experience that thoroughly confuses my IDE, and half of it doesn't work then. So that's one thing I want to avoid, and the other is if I'm 
if I download Drupal core and then start building on top of it and want to use Composer with it, I then want to not have any vendor in the repository. There so will the, be no vendor in okay. core. No, a single vendor in the root. And even that, we if we go do the follow-ups, we could remove that completely okay. because we can do it, we can automate it, automate it uh, in Drupal CI and our patching, packaging scripts. Okay. So at least in the interim, I in my site, I download Drupal, I then need to you know, remove the, the vendor or delete the vendor, then do a composer install to regenerate it and not put the new one into the, my, my own repository. Yeah. Okay. That's basically but it. it's doable then. But okay. for example, if you would uh, start with a Git clone, then you don't have to delete anything because the Git clone wouldn't mm -hmm. contain a vendor directory. So you can just start building. Okay. Assuming we do the follow-ups. Yeah, assuming we do the follow-ups. Okay. Yes. That sounds like the least bad plan I've heard so far in this yeah. saga, so <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, sure. so, so just one additional note to your point, um, to the like Drupal slash core downloading into the Drupal directory. That is actually exactly what happened in the first video when I just, like when you type composer install right now in 8.0.x, um, that's actually what happens because we have the dependency on the composer installers plugin in the root composer JSON and on Drupal slash core. Um, so what actually happens is it, it fetches the Drupal slash core package from, uh, from Packagist and it completely wipes the, the core directory that's there in Git and puts the package there. That's why we had the the ugly um, git diff there. So that that that's actually what what happens already right now, and that's what we're trying to avoid because we don't want like if the core directory is there in git, we don't want the composer to touch it. But if it's not, we want it to. And so you know we need to sort of have both. No, I just uh, wanted to ask a little bit about the semantic versioning for um, yeah. for working with packages. I mean, it, it seems like the only way we could work directly with packages as is is to abandon the relationship to the core version. Otherwise, we need to put some sort of facade up where we deliver the JSON either via the Drupal packages or something at Drupal org, right? Yeah, that's right. It it would, or yeah, anything with. If we want to keep our versioning system, then we have to implement some kind of a, a new code in packages that it will work with uh, different our new versioning theme. But it's highly unlikely that we get it in. And and, and if we wanted to have um, Composer JSON in all the modules that don't have a Composer dependency, we'd either have to add a commit to them, or we could add that into the packaging scripts, or we could have that as part of the. Uh, we would it's. Because the packages reads the Git directory, uh, Git repository directly, it w we need to have it in there. Right. If, if packages is serving the JSON, if right, we right. if we serve the JSON ourselves as a service, just like packages, then we don't have. We could generate it. Yes, yeah. It's okay. True. But we would uh, also have to read um, the contrib uh, rep repositories because the repositories might contain a composer JSON. So we can't rely just on our Drupal.org database, which tracks all the module releases and dependencies. We have to do more than that. Right, we have, oh, yeah. Larry? The other option there is what we were talking about in LA, which is just modules that don't have a composer JSON aren't installable via composer and go file a patch. And, yeah. and then that will just work its way through probably fairly quickly given that there will be a number of very high-level modules, very large modules that do require Composer uh, for various things they already do. And so the, the evolutionary pressure would take care of that for us very quickly, I think. So the, I, I don't find the argument that we would need to push you know, Composer JSON files into every module a compelling reason to not use Packagist as the distributor. That's easily solved by just social pressure within six months. Uh, you know, some of the other arguments around changing our versioning uh, are compelling only because we've been talking about it for a year and still haven't done anything. Yeah. But I, I don't think the, the, pre the requirement for the Composer JSON is not a compelling argument. To yeah, me. We, we could try to remove the, um, our, the Drupal versioning, version number from our version number and manage everything with Composer and do like a Drupal core requirement in every Composer JSON. It would work, but 
yeah, it's it's a huge change and it takes it. Really yeah. And there's like there's also like a um, tech, like a practical problem with that. So that would be like the first um, the first scheme up there. So we lose the seven or the eight completely. So something like current like eight dot x one dot x would be or or eight dot x one dot o would be one dot o dot o. So we get the the added patch level from semantic versioning. But the problem with that is actually that uh, for Drupal modules, like a lot of the modules uh, are maintained in 7 and in 8 at the same time. And so if you have like a 2.x, which has a dependency on Drupal 7, because it's a Drupal 7 module, and a 3.x is the Drupal 8 module, because it, so it has a dependency on Drupal 8, well then like a year later, Drupal 7 is still around and you decide to add like new features to your 7 version, um, then that like you really have no semantic version for that because if it's like a if you want to break the API in seven, like your seven module is two dot x and you break the API so you have to push the major version. So that makes it three dot x, but three dot x is already the eight module, so should it be four dot x or like two point five dot x or like that's sort of something that's unique to Drupal because like <laughs> modules are just really, really strongly bound to the core version. It's just not it's different than with other projects, I guess. Yeah, two ideas about this semantic versioning. I don't know if that's a good idea, but uh, first would be to make the um, core version part of the module or the package name. So it would be D8 views. Or right, views, okay, it's not core, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be D7 something and um, D9 something. So, and um, the other idea would be, no, that's something I forgot now. <laughs> um, and then generally the to, to publish something on Drupal.org and then have some automated process to put it on packages or to publish something on GitHub and then have some automated process to get it on packages or on Drupal.org or something. With this kind of uh, script or automated process, we could solve a lot of problems, I think. So uh, some of this you already suggested, but they can't go in different directions. And so someone who wants to have everything with Composer and puts a Composer JSON in their module, we could still have something that gets this on Drupal.org maybe. I'm not sure, but and someone who wants to do it old school and to do the Drupal arc without Composer JSON, then we could have something that adds a Composer JSON automatically. I don't think that's. I, I think that's better than uh, forcing everyone or more realistic, maybe. Yeah. Well, and um, so not directly an answer, but more like sort of in in the same context. Um, on packages, the Drupal namespace is currently owned by Dries. So no one can just like publish uh, like Drupal slash mycoolmodule on Packagist. Um, there are already a couple of modules on Packagist that do exist, but they like preceded the fact that Dries now owns the namespace. So we could actually have both. So we could have like an automatic integration with Drupal.org that pushes the modules to Packagist under like Drupal slash token and Drupal slash address or whatever. Um, and then if I just want to push some module to GitHub because I don't want to go through Drupal or whatever, I can still push it to packages on my namespace or in my company namespace or whatever and then still use it with a Composer workflow. So we we could actually have all the flexibility but still keep Drupal.org sort of as a canonical source for for our modules and, and still have that integrate with packages. So, yeah. Yeah, and I remember the other idea that, that was uh, to have one a package that contains different core versions but in different subfolders maybe and could even contain a WordPress extension or something. So you download this with, uh, with Composer and then Drupal automatically finds the right folder where they, for the correct core, core version and a lot of the classes might be shared between the different extension things. But um, then there's some specific stuff that is for the specific core version of Drupal. Oh, you, you mean like for a module to have like both versions of a contributed module in the same repo for the same version. So you download like 2.x of token and it both has like a D7 <laughs> module and a D8 module? Is that what you're yeah, proposing? Yeah, that was or? the idea. <laughs> okay. And it's just, uh, yeah. That seems like that would be a semantic version issue of all that thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that would solve the semantic versioning issue. I'm still not sure that's like, I mean, that's maybe something we have to discuss. That's not something, I, like, that's something I would advise strongly against. Um, but, yeah, that's maybe a discussion we should have, nonetheless.
So just a small reminder that Tim has created a BOF on Thursday at 11.45 that we can use to continue the discussion. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we have solved the problem of the core workflow using Composer. We just need to commit the patch and finish it. Uh, but the other problem that we haven't solved and we need to use DrupalCon to solve is the problem of Drupal packages versus packages. And Larry and others had uh, a very strong argument initially about pushing everything to packages uh, mostly for ideological reasons, but there has also been strong opposition since then for more practical reasons, and we should try and resolve those. I honestly don't have a horse in that race, but we should finish DrupalCon with an answer to that. And if we decide we want to keep using Drupal packages, then we need a follow-up to actually add that repository to our root composer JSON file. Yeah, um, yeah I totally agree. I mean, we... we to, to talked a lot uh, about that as well in like in the preparation preparation for the session, and so I think we at least we two agree that like in the long run, actually pushing everything to packages is sort of where we want to be at some point with everything having uh, composer JSON and somehow following semantic versioning, but especially due to the versioning issue, um, that's just not something we can do in a matter of months, I guess, um, and so sort of where we landed at, at, at our discussion is that the, there's really no way around some, some Drupal-specific version of a packagist in at least the medium term. So, but yeah, that's of course also up to discussion, I guess. So are there any other questions, comments? So, uh, slightly unrelated uh, observation. Um, actually, uh, earlier I was talking with Fago about a completely unrelated topic that is being able to uh, replace some core classes uh, with other classes by uh, developing them in Contrib and then later when they are mature enough, moving them to core. And he was bringing up the fact that we would need somehow to tie that to the actual versions of core, and so being able to somehow reflect that version in the version of the contrib module, because otherwise we won't be able to cleanly move them in core and have everything working smoothly. So I think we could have an argument for resolve the semantic versioning issue for contrib aside from packages and are set from composers, so probably we should bring them up anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, can I ask you to come back up? I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying there. So f developing a new version of some core service in Contrib, you can swap that in uh, from a Contrib module very easily already. At some point, we can move that into core. Cool, no problem. I'm not sure how versioning gets into this question. Well, uh, I might have uh, missed some details because this is a discussion we had uh, a few minutes ago. So, I might not have it. Uh, might not have reported it correctly. But actually, the idea was we were talking about uh, replacing uh, actually content entity bases, so not a <laughs> random class, okay? <laughs> so basically the idea was that uh, there may be many modules that are already extending the base class that in, is in core, and we want to move the new base class in core, and so we would need to do some fancy stuff to make sure that we are not bre breaking everything in the process. That's why gigantic base classes are a bad architectural pattern in the first place. <laughs> That's the answer to that. Um, I, I don't know what, I don't know how Composer would help with that. No, no. Or I was not talking about Composer. I was, <laughs> I was talking about being able a, able to somehow link the core uh, version, mm -hmm. which is semantic, with con the contrib version, which may not be semantic. Yeah. We, and we would be addressing many of the same problem that were already brought up. So are you talking about like? Contrib modules that require certain core versions. Yep, that's already supported, I believe. Okay. Well, that's how do we version? How do we version the 
core and country model in a way that it reflects the fact that somehow it's linked to a specific core semantic version. The yeah, the, the version requirement uh, or the requirements property in the module info file already supports ranges. So it, it can specify this version requires this range of core versions. That that already works. And you can do the same thing in Composer if you wanted to. I, I don't know which one you'd want to be using at that point. Okay, uh, I will think about this. I'm, I mean, I'm aware about that. I'm probably, I, I need to talk about that okay. a bit more with, but I was just pointing out that there may be other good reasons for for thinking about uh, semantic versioning aside from Composer okay. and Contrib. Okay. Sorry. Well, sorry about that. The the dependency on like the version specific dependency on core only works through like the workaround like to specify a dependency on system module and then specifying the version there, and that actually does not su uh, support semantic versioning. So you can just put in like system and then uh, like greater than. 7.16 or whatever, or 8.3. Um, but I'm not sure that you can actually put in like greater than 8.3.3. I'm actually like 85% sure that doesn't work, but I haven't checked in a while. So. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't. It doesn't actually do that. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I kind of want to bring up a separate composer versioning issue that um, I'm seeing from from like a testing perspective and in the test bots, and that's once we cut a actual release and it's like 8.0.0 or 8.0.1, um, I'm suggesting that the composer JSON file for core does has a range operator for the maximum version that was available at the time we cut that release, because there have been times when patch releases of dependencies have broken the testing infrastructure. And so what would happen is if we are testing against something and then somebody else commits a patch to their, um, to their dependency project, it could break what, what we have released. And so we could say, well, Drupal 8's com compatible with these versions, but it's not. And so I just was wondering how people thought about that, if, if that's a good idea or if there's a reason against range operators to say, you know, this is the max version when we cut the release that we should accept or thoughts on that? Can you come well, to the mic? Uh, if you lock, uh, sorry. Composer lock will only work for the entire project. You can't lock core. You, you have a lock for the whole project. So if we're inheriting Composer's JSON from below, then there's only one lock file. For core itself, I would be perfectly fine not bothering with the range, just saying this is the exact patch version that core is going to use. We bump that in the next point release, in our next... Uh, you know, patch release of Drupal if, like, there's a bug fix or a security fix or something like that. But for core itself, I'm totally fine just pinning it to, you know, guzzle 6.0.2, and that's the exact version we're going to use in no ranges at all. I think that's totally fine for Drupal. So in the light of, like, the earlier issue, that would basically mean, because now we have the core composer lock, so that would basically mean... Um, remove that and instead have a composer.lock in the root next to the root composer, Jason. We wouldn't need a lock for it, just require, it requires... Or that, well, yeah, or sure. Yeah. And I was just suggesting a range just in case there was a, a contrib module that was like, I need guzzle 6.0.2 and core at upgrades on the next patch release and it wouldn't work just to be able to say, well, it still works with these below, but here's the max release. Yeah. I mean, in theory, that's, like, why semantic versioning exists. So the theory would be that you can, like, we would specify the first two operators and then get, like, the patch level releases because there shouldn't be any breakage. Um, but, right, so I'm not sure that's, like, a separate discussion, how, how much trust we want to put in that. And I would totally be fine just locking down the versions altogether. I mean, that's... Yeah. 
I remember there was a question sometime, a uh, discussion about if a contract module wants to depend on something from Composer, uh, third-party library, um, it would put that in the Composer JSON, but then you have maybe modules and subfolders of the module. And now the question is, this is the dependency of the module package or of the module itself when it's enabled? And I think it will be of the package. I just want to, to clarify that again. So it, when you download the pack, module package, then you have the dependency. Yeah, that's, that's and correct. And not when you enable the module. I think we, we could try to support um, Composer JSONs in subprojects, but it's just a new ca uh, can of worms we are open. Yeah. So. And Composer is always package-based, and if you want to have ship this submodule separate, then you should have you need to have a subtree split, but Composer doesn't support repositories with multiple yeah, yeah. JSON files. It just doesn't work. It's it's part of the main module because it's high. The chance is very high that you, if you use the submodule, that you all also um, use the other module. So I guess it's okay to make it in the root of the project. Yeah, I was just thinking about some modules have that is like a suite of modules, and only one submodule mo might depend on a specific composer third party thing. And yeah. then we have two options. And the one option is just to make the entire package depend on that. And the other option would be that you have to manually add this to your root composer JSON. Yeah. And then only then you can enable this yeah. uh, submodule. For example, we, we could add the composer JSON to the submodule, and then you just use the composer merge plugin to use to merge oh. in this specific module when you need it. Yeah, but then the composer merge plugin would need, to, would, or the composer build thing would need to know which module you are going to enable. And I thought maybe it's easier to just then have, you have to manually add it to the root composer JSON, and only then you can enable this sub-module. No? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Better alternative. Please just stop putting multiple modules in the same package. Just don't do it. It made sense about seven years ago. It doesn't anymore. Just stop. There, there's extremely few use cases for it and it causes way too many problems. If we don't do that, this whole problem goes away. Yeah. The, the UI modules, to be perfectly honest, I think there's maybe four in all of Drupal that have a legitimate reason to have one. That's it. And those can just go into a separate actual module at that point. I think that's fine. <laughs>